Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. The United States is a government of laws uh, and separations of power. And when a, even if it's an individual district court judge who's making this determination, we've got to go through the process. Blue Monday, how are you? Blue Monday. Another Blue Monday. I got to work, plank or sleeve on me. Thanks, Fats. I appreciate it. Give him a pork rib and I'll see him in the casino. Listen, I got to tell you something. Last night I was at dinner. I've been eating too much after the illness, you know, starve a fever, feed a cold and all that. So I figured, all right, it's licensed to eat a lot after I was sick. And I, I, a lot, I, I ate a lot, drank a lot. I couldn't eat, though. I sat down at dinner with a friend, and the first thing I said was, I can't eat. The Islamic State is throwing gay men off roofs head first under the guise of Muslim Sharia law. I said, I can't sit here. I can't take it anymore. There are pictures of them being thrown off a building from, from uh, Fox News pictures. And you have to look at the pictures to understand what I'm saying to you. ISIS is throwing gay men off roofs in the areas that they capture, for example, in Mosul. And they make hundreds of innocent people watch this happen. The gay men are held by their feet and dropped head first. The Islamic State released a series of horrifying photos showing blindfolded men tossed headfirst off a building because ISIS claimed they were gay. Not one word from the gay lobby in America, not one word from the gay lobby in Europe, not one word from the United Nations, not one word from that lying, thieving, backstabbing, anti-American creature in the White House. I couldn't eat, so I decided to drink before I ate. Then I was able to eat a little bit. Women are being kidnapped and raped. Eight-year-old girls are being kidnapped and sold as slaves and raped by these vermin throwback subhumans. Islamic State subhumans. Not one word from a women's group, a woman's group anywhere on earth. Is it any wonder it's a blue Monday? I mean, you could sit idly by, but you're the type that sat idly by while the Jews were being gassed in the gas chambers. Oh, I know. Why, if they dare do that again, you'd, you'd do what? You'd do nothing. You would do nothing. You're exactly the good German. All of you are the good German. You've done nothing while this is going on. While this Holocaust occurs, you've done nothing. You've enabled Obama. You've enabled Obama, which is why this is happening. All of you liberals are guilty for these rapes and murders because you've enabled Obama. You've enabled a sorority that looks the other way, that is concerned with sexual harassment in the military as opposed to real rape, real kidnapping, and real murder. So it's a blue Monday, all right. But you don't care because you're a good American. And good Americans don't care about such things. And secondly, what do you care about Iraq and gays? You're not Iraqi and you're not gay. So why should you care about that? Let them throw them off the roofs. Is that right? Is that what you want? Well, that's, your, that's what America's become. Indifferent, numb, eight-second attention span. The attention span not of a goldfish but of a gnat. You have the attention span of a Drosophila fly. That's what you have. Have a nice Monday. Let's hear Blue Monday again, and I'll start the show on another note. Now that I got that out of my system, I can go on to the show. Blue Monday. How are you, Blue Monday? Got to work, plank or sleeve on me. Here come Tuesday. Oh, Welcome to the Savage Nation. What a cheerful Monday we're going to have today. Yes, indeedy. Convey a radio. Convey a talk radio. Yes, those Republicans are just dandy and great. And those Democrats are just evil. Now, if we only elected a Republican, why, we'd have a perfect republic all over again. It's just those nasty little Democrats that we have to get out of the way. Yes, indeedy, here we come. Convey a radio for the radio consumer. What he says in the morning is repeated ten times a day, but not by me. I was reading an article about creativity and psychosis sharing a genetic source. Artistic creativity may share genetic roots with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, according to a study published today. The research published in the journal Nature Neuroscience 
delves into a well-known genetic database, the Decode Library of DNA Codes, derived from samples provided by the population of Iceland. Let me stop right there. I'm sorry, I have nothing against Icelanders, but if I were to study creativity, I would not choose a population of Icelanders. So far as I know, they're not very well known for creativity. They may be fine people. They may know how to ski and whatever they do, they kill musk ox. Of course, mus mus musk ox are dead for a long time. Whatever they kill up there, rain there. But why would you study schizophrenia and creativity in Iceland? Who would choose such a population? I know why they choose such a population, because it's a homogeneous population. So the authors looked at 86,000 Icelanders. Listen, if you put me in Iceland, I'd go schizophrenic within a half a year. How could you live there? What is there to do there? I mean, I don't have no any Why would anyone live there unless they were born there? So they looked at the genomes of people engaged in artistic work. All right. And these samples came from more than 1,000 volunteers who were members of Iceland's National Societies of Visual Arts, theater, dance, writing, and music. All right, fine. And they found that members of these organizations were 70% likelier than none members to have the same genetic signature. So what? So what are they proving? What, people who are creative tend to be a little bipolar or a little schizophrenic? And listen to me. I don't understand why this study has any validity whatsoever. We all know that creative people tend to be a little nuts. And we all know that psychotic people tend to be a little creative. And so what's new about the study? Nothing. I guess they had to send somebody to Iceland uh, with an NSF grant or an NIH grant or something like that. But let me ask you something. If you are a creative person, you know that you're under the pressure of having certain impulses that the people around you have never had. Feelings, sensitivities, intuitions, uh, and things like that. And as opposed to the normal paths, who either never feel these things or suppress them, you as an artist not only don't suppress those feelings, you engage with them. And that's how you can paint. And that's how you can write. That's how you can compose music, right? Is this something you're interested in? I don't really know. I have no idea what people are interested in. I got a letter over the weekend. Savage, it came to me by email from uh, uh, Talker57. That's the group that charts the uh, people who listen to talk radio on uh, streaming radio, where my show is number one with a 25 share. Rush has a 12 share. God bless him. You wouldn't know any of this. You'd think he's number one, but he isn't. In streaming radio, where younger people listen to radio, I'm number one with a monster share of 25. So someone, they can't reach me, so they reach me through that site. It's a short paragraph that's worth listening to. Dr. Savage, I was a POW at age seven along with my family in the Philippines at the start of World War II. The Japanese put every foreign citizen, other than Germans and Italians, into concentration camps. We were in Santo Tomas. After six months, the president, who the Japanese appointed, was a good friend of my father. They were both Masons. He wrote a release for all of us, and we hid in the Philippine jungle for three years. We were protected by the ITAS, a group of mountain people. The group that hit us numbered about 30. Anyway, Savage, they had a cure for just about everything. For instance, their cure for diarrhea was charcoal from coconut shell. It worked for me. Another cure was, again, coconut charcoal and coconut oil for any cut. Again, it worked for me. Unfortunately, these gentle people were ratted out by a M-A-C-A-P-I-L-I, Filipinos that joined the Japanese, and the Kempatais, the Japanese Gestapo, came to their village and killed all of these gentle people. The Japanese killed every last one of them. We were across the ridge at the time and witnessed the whole thing. We were protected by another guerrilla group after that. Keep up with your radio program, Dr. Savage. I've been listening to you for three years now. Now, that was in response to my talk about the tribal people using their own medicine for the last hundreds of thousands of years because I was very fortunate to have worked with tribal people in Fiji, Fiji, Tonga, Samoa, Marquesas. I've been on some of the remotest islands in the world before tourism decimated these islands and turned them into extensions of MTV. And so I have a great respect for the technology of so-called primitive people. I'm not selling you anything. I'm not selling you uh, anything at all. I'm just saying that before we sneer at uh, individuals who still live in these remote regions as kind of throwbacks or have no knowledge of the world or how to survive, why don't you consider trying to survive naked and afraid in a jungle and see how long you'd last? 
As I told you, Nat Geo has a show, Naked and Afraid, that I like a lot because you see, you, you see these very fit people, some of them ex-Army Rangers, some of them uh, Special Forces men, tough as nails. They don't last 10 days. They can't do it. The women are tougher than the men in many cases, not always. But these women who think they're tough as iron crack up and have to be airlifted out as well. And you think about the peoples who've lived on these islands and how they've learned how to live off the land is astonishing. That's technology. And they uh, know that from trial and error over 20,000 years or more. And that's where that came from. That's all. 855 I'm not sure where I'm going to go today. I have some wonderful scholarship applications that I had intended to read. Remember, I'm running a contest which closed on March 31st. It's $100,000 to each of, uh, to five people that get $20,000 each. We had to screen 1,700 applications for an essay on what it means to be an American. And I'm going to read you one of them from a college student so that you have hope, so that you don't think that all of them are drug addicts, pot smokers, transition cases, or, or whatever. They're not all waiting to become uh, a sex changer. Many of them love this country and they're willing to fight and die for it, as you'll see soon when I return right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. The only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800 B U I C O I N. A migraine listening to this. Okay, welcome back to the Savage Nation. It's a blue Monday. I don't know what's wrong today. It's horrible. As ISIS throws gays off roofs, gays say nothing in America. They're worried about homophobia in the workplace. As ISIS brutalizes, kidnaps, and rapes women and girls, a silence from feminists. All right, you don't care about that. Clinton donated $100,000 to New York Times group the same year paper endorsed her. What's new about that? The New York Times is what? What, what has it ever been? Is anything, anything but a publicity rag for the radical left? No. They take my book. Yeah, I'll make it personal. Countdown to Mecca. It beat four other books in sales for two weeks in a row, and they refused to list it as one of the top 15. What does that tell you? It tells you what you need to know. You're living in a, in a concentration camp of ideas. You know, only the leftist ideas uh, need apply. It's an interesting statement. I was reading over the weekend that liberalism is making a comeback in America, according to a, a, a survey of a thousand adults. I love a thousand adults. I don't know any conservative who has ever been approached by a pollster, nor would reply to a pollster. But anyway, a thousand adults. Who are these adults? Where they meet them all in a, in a club, and they say that. Uh, People are more accepting of liberal ideas now. They shift on this. Gay marriage, of course, is the number one thing. Day and night brainwashing. Day and night. Like Lenny Reifenstahl, around the clock, gay marriage, 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 sex change, sex change, sex change, sex change. Gay marriage, gay marriage. It's all that's on anyone's mind. It's all that's on their minds. They're psychotic. They're nuts. That's all they care about in a world that's going up in flames with people being raped and murdered and thrown off buildings? Yes, that's all I care about. Your toothbrush may be covered in poop. Let me get scatological. It's an interesting story, but since you're not interested in news today, I can sense it. Is everyone on vacation? It's the 8th of June, so the brats are in school, aren't they? They're in school still? The Ritalin cases are not on vacation again? Every other day, they're running in the streets... And wherever I go, 9 o'clock at night, they're sitting there with a coloring book next to me in a restaurant. I don't go out for fine dining to watch a child with a coloring book. I don't want to see him in there. They should ban them. I don't go to McDonald's with a coloring book. I just love the, the, the 60-year-old father with the ponytail, with the younger wife, I indulging the child at the de table next to me. I just love it. They give you a history lesson. You're sitting here trying to eat... And they ask him, so, Johnny, who was the 13th president of the United States? And the little parrot repeats it as, as he's coloring a picture of uh, Zimbabwe or something. I, I can't stand it anymore. It's a country gone mad. Your toothbrush may be covered in poop. What's this nonsense? That got nothing better to do? Oh, toothbrushes and communal bathrooms. Well, what do you expect? You mean chill college students? 